Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reggie Johannes, and I am the community coordinator at the Haines Sheldon Museum. So today we're going to take a historic look at beloved work animals in our collection uh, with history tidbit number 14, sled dogs and pack animals. So I'd like to start with two glossary terms, draft animals and pack animals. So draft animal is a working animal that typically pulls a load behind itself, such as a cart, plow, or sled. And a pack animal is an animal that carries cargo directly on its back. And as you'll see towards the end of this video, um, in the Chilkat Valley, some animals often served both functions as both draft animals and pack animals. So when people think of draft animals in Alaska, what immediately comes to mind are sled dogs. While dog mushing is typically associated with communities further north, we do have a history of dog teams in the Chilkat Valley. In fact, the last dog musher in Haines, Jim Stanford, only just retired last year in 2019. But for the purposes of this talk, I'll focus on early dog mushing, also known as dog sledding, from the late 1890s to early 1940s, as seen through items in the museum collection. So traveling in winter was easiest with a team of dogs. Dog sledding was common as a means of transport through the snow, and teens Teams in Haines town site were also used for fun and recreation during the long winter months. But in addition to wintertime activities, dog teams could also be seen in summertime, like in this photo from 1918. So some sled owners kept their dogs in harness training all summer long by having them pulled wheel carts, such as this wheeled cart seen on Fort Seward Dock, pulled by three dogs in 1918. And a 1925 article from the collection in a hunting and trapping magazine by a Haynes visitor notes that, quote, during the summer, they are hitched to little wagons and work just like mules, end quote. In terms of team size, four dogs were most often used. However, dog team sizes varied all the way from one willing sled dog to as many as 10 or 12 dogs in a team. And these larger team sizes were frequently seen up at Fort Seward, where there was a dog kennel. And dog teams were present in multiple communities in the Chilkat Valley, including the town site of Haines, neighboring Klukwan, and at the Fort Seward. Now let's take a look at some photos, starting with dog teams in Haines. So this is the earliest photo of sled dogs in our collection. It was taken in 1898 on Main Street in front of the Spooner Hotel, which later became the Hotel Northern. This photo is interesting because the group is posed in front of the hotel to commemorate the first organizational meeting to plan for the town of Haines. We are incorporated as a town officially 12 years later in 1910, um, but this photo commemorates the first meeting. As with many of our early photos, most of the people pictured are unidentified. Um, however, you can see Mr. Rapinski uh, behind the fifth dog from the left. Now this next photo was taken at the same location a couple years later after the hotel had changed its name to the Hotel Northern. You can see the sign up here. Um, again, this is on Main Street circa 1900. And here's a view of a dog team um, that is a family dog team with the typical four dogs. So there you can see there are two children and two women that are in the sled. And this image was taken at Portage Cove in 1912. And this is one of those summertime views of an eight dog team getting their off season exercise by pulling a wheeled cart. And I find this photo particularly amusing because there is a sign that you can see right at the dock that says, notice, walk all teams on this dock. But the musher seems to have disregarded the sign. 
Another photo from our collection is of some young sled dogs pulling a baby in a sled. And a note from our database suggests that this, uh, the single rope that is seen here in the front indicates that these young dogs are in training and are actually being led along the trail by a person that is not seen. Um, concluding our town site of Haynes, we have this photo. Um, the exact date is unknown, but it is showing a five dog team uh, sledding across the frozen Chilkat River. So in addition to the town site of Haynes, there were also many teams in neighboring Klukwan. So Elizabeth Hakkinen, our museum founder, uh, recounted that, quote, most families in Klukwan had teams and visited Haynes periodically during the winter, sometimes bringing moccasins, totems, and baskets, which they traded for food and other items, needed items to take home. The dog team always made the wintertime mail run between Haynes and Klukwan until the mid-30s. And we actually recently digitized a whole bunch of video footage, including a video of Klukwan in winter taken in the 1930s. Um, and in this video, there is some footage of a two dog dog team. Um, unfortunately, that video is too large to include in this presentation, but is available elsewhere on our Facebook page. And I will post a link in the comment section after. So I'd also like to share some photos of dog teams in Klukwan. So this photo was taken in between 1911 and 1913, and it shows a five dog team with an additional untethered dog uh, at, in Klukwan. The other photo from Klukwan we have is um, of Klukwan resident Gus Claney and his dog team. This photo is actually taken in Haynes in 1935 as the team prepared for their return journey home to Klukwan. And a handwritten note on the bottom of the photo says, a good team. The Gus Claney is also mentioned in the 1925 hunting and trapping article where the author notes that Claney's team, quote, overtook us at mile four near Yendestucky, end quote. And the author of this article uh, took a ride with the dog team of another Klukwan resident, Sam Fox. So moving forward to uh, Fort Chilkoot or Chilkoot Barracks, there were many dog teams that were maintained at the fort um, and were housed in kennels behind officer's row. Dogs were crucial for transportation during winter maneuvers. Um, and we know that there were, uh, that the kennels could hold about 40, little over 40 dogs. Um, and in 1938, the veterinary division of the Surgeon General's office was asked to furnish medications for the care of the 44 sled dogs at Chilkoot Barracks um, for that year. And we, um, in January of 1941, uh, sled dogs from Chilkoot Barracks were transferred to a different military base in Fairbanks. So 43 dogs and 12 men left Haynes to make the 600 mile or 1000 kilometer trip. And we don't have a large record of this trip in our collection. However, outside sources suggest that the expedition actually got hung up in deep snow, snow near Kluani Lake um, and had to be retrieved by airplane for the rest of the journey to Fairbanks. But in our collection, we do have video footage of soldiers titled Thousand Mile by Dog Team, taken in the early 40s. And it's probable that this is the same journey, which is actually a thousand kilometers um, or 600 miles. And at the end of this video, I will we'll include the link to that footage. In terms of other photos, we have uh, this photo of sled dogs near Fort Seward taken in 1916, as well as this photo from the late 1930s of those dog kennels um, that are behind officer's row. So that's it for do sled dogs. Um, let's jump back in time and talk about pack animals. So pack animals were very commonly used for trail uh, 
her travel along the Dalton Trail. So in 1890, Jack Dalton joined the Leslie's Illustrated Magazine expedition to the Alsek River headed by E.J. Glaive. The Glaive expedition traveled along historic Clinket trade routes or grease trails up the Chilkat River. Dalton and Glaive recognized that this was a significant route into the interior. Um, and the following year in 1891, they returned with the first pack horses ever seen in the Upper Lynn Canal. Over the following years, Dalton constructed trading posts and made trail modifications to make it possible to drive cattle and haul freight over the trail. When gold was discovered on the Klondike in 1896, the Dalton Trail was a ready-made route to Dawson. And you can read more about the history of the Dalton Trail on our website, but for today's purposes, it's important to know that Dalton demanded a toll for use of his trail and that the rate of the toll varied depending on the demographics of the traveling party, including the type of pack animals and draft animals. So this is a graphic from our main exhibit in our galleries um, showing the different trail toll fees of the Dalton Trail. So you have your pack animals first, uh, the rate for cattle, horses, mules and burrows of $2.50 an animal, your goats, sheep, and swine at 50 cents, um, as well as your draft animals, um, the single horse with sled or wagon unloaded, $2.50, um, and varying rates for larger wagons and horses, uh, as well as dog teams. Uh, in terms of historic videos, uh, sorry, Historic photos, we have this image of pack mules on Dalton Trail uh, taken between 1897 or 1900. Later, soldiers at Fort Seward relied on pack animals to transport goods and for use during maneuvers. This included horses and mules. Uh, in this image, you can see pack mules and soldiers that are fording the river in 1937. So finally, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, work animals in the Chilkat Valley could be used interchangeably as both draft and pack animals. Uh, so I'd like to leave you with this final photo of the Husky Murphy loaded up with camping gear in 1916. And this photo comes from a collection of a soldier, Houston Hunt, who was stationed at Fort Seward during this time. So thank you all for listening. Uh, you can find those historic video links and other educational resources later this afternoon on our webpage at sheldonmuseum.org slash special events. And I will also post the links in the comment section of this video. And I also just want to let you know about the upcoming history tidbits next week. Uh, next Wednesday, we'll be talking about analysis of form line design. And on Friday, we'll have guest speaker from the Alaska State Museum talking about Chilkat blankets and weaving. So thanks for listening and have a good weekend.